hands were filthy, so I asked the guy if I could go into the house and uh, wash my hands, and he said, yeah, no problem. And then while I was in there, I decided to take one more pass through the basement, because there was a workshop down in the basement, but I really didn't see any tools down there. So I went back down to the basement, and I happened to notice the room that had the, uh, this house was oil, heated with oil, and there was a old steam boiler down there, um, which had one kind of like the low squat, flat metal tops on it kind of like this top here and piled up high all over this uh this boiler were cartons and cartons and cartons of welding rod and my previous experience with getting old welding rod was you know once the moisture gets to them they're pretty much junk even if they look good when you get them they tend to uh the flux coating will tend to uh crack after the first uh after you strike the first arc and uh, you're going to just have trouble with them. And I could tell that the reason why the old timer who lived there had it all stacked up on top of that boiler was because that boiler was probably warm all the time and uh, he was using that to try and keep the moisture out of there. The problem was apparently the heirs of the estate had stopped heating the house because, you know, nobody was living there. And so the basement was back to its musty old typical basement self. So I had very little faith in any of that welding rod that I saw stacked up there. So I was about to pass on all of that when I spotted these boxes of what it says here, Utecrode 190. Uh, and then in parentheses here, it says torch alloy. Um, and what this appears to be are filler metal rods for doing repair work on aluminum, I think. Because it actually, this one, the guy actually wrote on here, copper to aluminum. So apparently if he wanted to braze copper to aluminum, he was using these rods for that. Now the beauty of these are that they don't have any kind of a flux coating like a that I have to worry about. So I don't think these were adversely affected by the uh, by the fact they were down there. Uh, it says here temperature apparently at 1,070 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, tensile streak 34,000 34, psi. You know some of the uses they show here: furniture repair, window frames, ducts, and uh, blower housings. Exceptional thin flowing properties. Uh, other uses, radio instruments, ducts, principal applications, furniture, window frames, appliances. So anyways, th this stuff here, I figured, well, I might be willing to take a chance if I could get this stuff cheap enough. This one, so this is one number 190. This box is 196. It says alloy. alloy torch. This one says Kirksite dies, <laughs> horn rims, carburetors, and hardware applications. I don't even know what a Kirksite die is, but apparently you can repair it with this stuff. Uh, bonds without puddling of base metal. Other uses, grills, hardware, and ornamentals. So this stuff uh, is thicker than that other stuff. But again, you see there's no there's no flux coating. The flux must be in. The flux is either in the material itself or you're supposed to use a flux that you dip it in. I don't know. So I'll have to do a little research to figure out what the deal is here. And then there's a the box of this Utec, ro Utec Rod. That's probably how you say that. Utec Rod 19. Uh, and this one Aluminum casting defects, sealing fine cracks, uh, principal applications, building up worn or undersized sections, uh, self-fluxing on aluminum, it says. So aluminum extrusions, casting defects, sealing fine cracks, and building up worn areas. Uh, so I got these three boxes, which still have quite a bit left in each one, for five bucks. 
So my total uh, outlay for the day was $105, and I'm very satisfied with that. Oh, I'm going to close out this particular uh, video with one little pylon add-on. This is not the estate sale. I've actually had this box down here unopened for a few weeks now. This is uh, something I took a chance on getting on eBay and uh, ended up buying it. And I never even looked at this when it came in. This was uh, one of these deals where I came across this and realized that because of the way it was listed, I kind of felt that it was going to be overlooked. And, and uh, so I got this. Um, I'm going to have to put up on the screen what I paid for this stuff because I honestly don't even remember. But I can guarantee it was cheap. How do I know that? Because I bought it. And I don't really need, <laughs> I don't really need any more collets right now, but yeah, they're rusty, but um, I, I got these really cheap, and why did I buy these now? You're wondering, I'm wondering too, I don't remember honestly. These had to be for the Andy, let's see. Well, that poor sucker is so rusted I can't even make anything out on it. It's not pitted, it's surface rust. It'll probably still clean up okay. It'd be nice if it could at least see what size that was. Let's see what the other ones look like. So these are probably listed as 2H collets, which I think I had read somewhere that 2H collets should be the uh, 2H, I think, uh, signifying that's a hardened standard, but that that's what the handy 12 inch lathes used so I don't know these look small so anyways I got that nice rack with the uh, call it uh, closer uh, sleeve or whatever you guys may have may have, some of you guys may have seen that All right, this is the cleanest looking one Let's see what we can find out in this one here this is a 716. Here we go. This is a hard inch. <sighs> this just says hard inch. There's no. So I guess the key here is you're supposed to know based on the size of something else on here uh, what the heck this is. So let me just go grab them. All right. So here we go. So here's that set. Oops. Here's that set I picked up like a couple months ago and I did a video showing this and talked about how it was a real, ended up being a real steal because at first I thought that this sleeve didn't go with these because the, the, the seller didn't claim that it did because of the way it fit only to find out that the reality is that there was just, uh, I still haven't gotten around to doing it, that this just needs to be deburred. Um, on the inside here and of course you're gonna line it up just right but what I ended up finding out was that yes indeedy these collets do fit this sleeve and then there was a question as to whether or not this sleeve really was made to fit my Hendy lathe because again the seller never claimed that these were this was for the Hendy but some of these collets I think were Hendy collets which is why I bought the set anyways I ended up being able to insert this in there and it actually fit pretty good but it left a gap. Um, but then somebody pointed out to me that chances are there was a thread protector, in other words a collar that's supposed to thread, uh, thread onto the spindle and acts to protect the threads of the spindle when you're using the collar closer. And that that might be what would account for taking up that gap that was in there. And I'm, I'll probably make one of those at some point. So anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. So the question is, these, I think, were marked in some way to indicate exactly what they are. Yeah, these are 2H collets, okay? So these are what, according to what I was able to research online, what the Hendry should use, which is why I popped on these. And now that I look at them side by side, you can see these are 2H collets. So, uh, I got another gaggle of 2H collets to clean them up. And... I might not even need them, but I noticed that this, you know, there's some duplicates. Some of these are duplicates, and there's only 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's only 11 collets here, and some of them are duplicates. So the idea was that if I could take a few of these, help make this a nicer set, then great. Well, that was a bust. 
can't win them all. I was just going to go through and take any of the ones out of this new lot that I acquired that I were missing from this set and put them in here. And well, just my luck. Every single one that's in here, I've already got in this set up here. So, doesn't look like I'm going to fill in anything. There might be one or two that are a little bit better physical condition than the ones I've got in here now. Uh, but, they've got more rust on them, so I'll have to clean them up and make that determination at some point down the road. But for the time being, it looks like uh, this didn't really do me any good at all. I can't win them all. Alright, that's it for now.